Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day today. We're gonna talk about NEO and we're gonna deep dive a little bit about the ET7 and some new awards that just were handed to NEO. And we're also gonna talk about the ET7 potentially having some test drives, getting some customers to finally test out the ET7. Stick around to the end of my video. I'm also gonna do a little bit of a deep dive on the sales mix. How are December deliveries compared to Q3? Because apparently our average selling price is higher and we beat BMW and Audi on sales price. Mercedes is still ahead of us, but let's deep dive into that. If this is your first time on this video. I'm Rod and I do videos just like these. I go over stocks. I give you my entertainment, not a financial opinion. And if this is maybe value to you, I'd recommend maybe a like on the video, maybe a subscribe for more relatable content. Uh, and I really hope that you get something out of this video. So let's dive into first what the share price is. Like in any of my videos, we'll just kind of cover that and get that out of the way. So we're standing at about $31.68 today. We are up 6% pretty favorably, even though we had news today where inflation is up 7% year over year or 0.5% from a month over month perspective. Pretty substantial increase. But not the point of this video. Uh, market cap right now is at about 50.4 billion for NEO. Not too bad. We've been kind of trailing back up. Looks like the market's looking at small caps a little bit more favorably and NEO. Talk about something a little different right now. Let's look at NEO's average sale price for their vehicles. Uh, we have this new article which pretty much states that the average selling price is about 59 sorry that's 69,700 in US and we're outplacing BMW and Audis in China uh, and there's only one other competitor ahead which is Mercedes that's still number one but we're coming in pretty close we even have a record for the ES8 achieving almost 84,000 US uh, in, in an average sell price, which is a record. So what's really interesting to note here is this report that has concluded these results extracted essentially the sales mix that came from NEO's December results, which essentially takes how many, we, how many vehicles we've sold between the ES6, our ES8, and the EC6, and I've also done the same here, and I've kind of compiled it on an Excel just for us to take a look at. So if we had to look at those December deliveries, we sold the most amount was of ES6s, but we have a pretty substantial amount of growth in ES8s that have now outpaced the EC6s. So that's pretty interesting to understand. And then what I've also done here is I've compared it against the Q3 deliveries, just to understand how this sales mix, customer demand for a specific vehicle, is essentially changing uh, towards prior deliveries. So let's see how the customer is adapting or evolving. And it looks like there is a greater demand right now for the ES8s, which increased by about 4% versus Q3, and the EC6s are actually dropping. So it looks like there's a conversion here that's happening. What's really cool about this is that ES8s are priced at a premium, at a higher price, and so that essentially is gonna drive that average price to come up. Which, if we take this, this idea back to the article that we were just looking at, explains why it makes sense that we're starting to be in a better position, especially when looking at it compared to BMW and Audi, and our average price is coming up. So we only got Mercedes-Benz, that's still in number one, but I did think this was pretty cool to call out. So let's jump into the ET7, we have some Pretty big news. It looks like we're winning some awards. ET7 is doing good. The ET7 has just received a new award for its design. Uh, it's being recognized for having a very outstanding design. And if we obviously take a quick look at the ET7 on the website, I have it here pulled up just for us to take a quick look at. We can obviously see that the car is a very stylish vehicle, great curvature. I do really like the colors that are there too, but I'm just gonna quickly run through this, just if this is your first time looking at the ET7. If you've seen the ET5, it's similar to the ET5. It's just a longer wheelbase, uh, and this is what Neo is referring to as more of their flagship vehicle. Here's some little snippets on the Neo website of what it does look like. 
So I'll leave that to you to kind of check that out, but I did think that, that was pretty cool. And there's another cool article that I thought was relevant to also talk about since we're talking about the ET7. But we essentially have that the ET7, and this is rumors, is essentially coming available for test drives. And why this is significant is because we have essentially a March, end of March goal of getting the first deliveries out, right? And so if we're starting to have those test drives come in, I think it's just a matter of time before we start to hear the customer feedback and start to get some better understanding of how the ET7 is performing. Are people loving it? How's the interior? How's the technology? How's it stand up? And I feel like this is also going to be pretty cool to digest and understand this new data for us to kind of apply that to the ET5, which is coming down the road in September. So when we take a look at this article, it's being rumored from Weeble Car Blogger. So this isn't confirmed yet, but he's been accurate in the past and so the speculation is that the test drives have begun the article also states that apparently there was um, insurance on an et7 and they're speculating that that should be the test drive vehicle that is performing the test drives so i thought that was pretty cool for us to kind of just call out and look into and lastly we have some breaking news with neo uh, that apparently we're entering into a strategic partnership with steel producer bayo steel um, apparently neo says that this is significant because of the requirements uh, to essentially integrate material solutions um, and both of the companies are looking like are going to be strengthened by this partnership and obviously green and low carbon areas so no details yet as to what to expect with the two partner the two companies being partnered um, but we can obviously expect some good things so with that i'm just going to close out the video here let me know what your thoughts are and i hope that uh, you enjoyed the video let me know your feedback thanks i'll see you in the next one